Uh, greetings, greetings, everyone. Welcome to Top Tier Tips. All right, last week we went over frame advantage, which did complement the previous session that we did involving um, explaining the move details. So uh, this week we're going to be in the I'm continuing on a bit with the kind of exploration of how frame advantage works in Dead or Alive 5, 5 last round. And uh, whatever, what I'm going to be most, mostly focusing on this week is just um, exploring just how negative frames tend to operate as in what kind of like uh, actions or what, what kind of um, thought process you should have when you're at certain negative frames or being able to keep in mind what's like what your options are, what actions you take if your opponent is at negative frames. All right, so uh, for this session, I'm also I'm also going to be making reference to a fairly uh, um, legendary uh, veteran player in the DOA's community known as Xtest. Anyone that was um, anyone that was around uh, DOA four days like are also. Um, around the site called DOA Central, you may have heard of Xtest. I mean, I admit that he 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 hasn't uh, he hasn't really been that active with DOA Five. But uh, back in the DOA Four days, he was a pretty big figurehead and was um, arguably one of the best Ionis there there was at the time. All right, what I'm going to be making reference to is um, is this legendary player's. Um, an excerpt that he made, or uh, which he calls the Book of Destruction. What it, what it is is his uh, kind of like his uh, manual that ends up describing different major aspects which pertain to DOA. He was mostly focusing on DOA four. However, a lot of this stuff in his book can, can be just as applicable in DOA five. All right. So without further ado. Um, Let's get things going now. All right, so what I'm mostly going to be doing, though, is just uh, making quite a bit of references to the Book of Destruction, and then I'll end up, especially like around the end, I'll end up just um, just going over things a little bit and maybe giving you like a bit of a recap just to try and um, narrow things down quite a bit because some of the some of the kind of like uh, or focuses are. In the in the in the book of destruction, in this section can be they can be pretty advanced. All right, so now I'll just start off with um, looking at negative frames, as in um, frame advantages. But this time, I'm going to be starting from the attacker's perspective. All right, I'm going to be starting off with what's called minuscule advantage, also known as um, zero to minus three on guard. This situation usually comes out of um, jabs or low jabs. Some characters have good options that will give minuscule disadvantage on block, like Jan Lee's uh, PP, 6P, or 3P. I'm sure you can find more situations like this. It it usually is like about, I mean like around just 0 to 3 guard, on 0 to minus 3 guard on block, because um, the a the average fastest mid for most characters is about is around 13 frames. Though of course characters there are characters do have uh, 12 frame highs, 12 frame mids, different things like that. I mean also including um of course 10 frame jabs. So but for the average um, being at zero to minus three on guard kind of forces a strange mix up that doesn't really provide that good of a mind game to the defender. Basically the person that is at the zero to plus three on block. Because obviously the, the attacker got something defended so that's why they're at what's considered slight disadvantage or minuscule advantage. See? The minuscule is known as the attacker's mind game because of this. If the attacker jabs, you can high crush. You can jab, but you cannot do your fastest mid. If you hesitate, you will not be getting a counter blow, period. This, d this does open grounds for high crushes, but high crushes are slow and the opponent can mix up with their fastest mid. But if you do your fastest mid, you beat their fastest mid. If you jab, you beat their jab. Even though this is the closest thing to an equal mind game in the game, the defender still has the final advantage. And, I mean, where when you're at... Um, 
zero to minus three frames. I mean, physically speaking, the person that's at zero to minus three is at disadvantage. But um, if you take all the kind of like aspects of the of the game into account, then if you take take it into account, then you're, it seems like it's almost a mind game on both ends because it's not like the the person that is at minus three can like do whatever they want. It's that they 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 have to kind of anticipate how the they have to anticipate how the opponent will respond. Like a lot of times, I I do tend to make use of um. I do tend to take make use of moves that can be like uh, light light negative on block. Like for instance, a jab on block is minus one. I mean, for for most characters, it's usually a similar amount. It's usually within that zero to minus three. Or something like Ionis 3 which is case minus 3 on block. So, what this usually means though is that although I'm physically at disadvantage, it's not like I'm at the opponent's mercy or anything. Like, I can still, I can still end up pushing buttons if I think they might try and retaliate with a, like an average speed mid or something like that. Then I can just try and jab back to try and interrupt it. If I think they're going to try and attack with a high, then I can then like, go for a low for instance. So it's, uh, a lot of times I tend to abu uh, almost abuse slight negative frames because if the opponent hesitates, if the opponent kind of hesitates at all, then I can basically fully, then I can actually almost turn it around and though. Because really, unless the opponent is completely sure that they're at advantage, they, they may be wondering, oh, what is he going to do? What is he going to do? Like that. Because there's no, there's no guaranteed option they can do to just kind of completely stop you. Like in this case, they they may try and um like six P U, but in that I mean you could still technically block, but um but other 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 than that, um, especially if you like if you were to space your mo your moves properly, um, being at uh, being at slight being at minuscule disadvantage or or minuscule advantage for the opponent is generally it's not a bad situation to be in. Alright, so let's go on to the next section now, which is just called Small Advantage, which is uh, focuses around minus 4 to minus 5 on guard. So this is when you end up doing something that leaves you at minus 4 or minus 5. This situation is most common for just standard safe moves. You cannot get a free grab at all. Even a normal 5 frame grab, since there is a... In a DOA 5 last round, there is a 1 execution, so you've you got to add on an extra frame. The first you can punish is a uh, six frame guard advantage with a uh, well, which would is like minus six is throw punishable with a neutral grab, but minus four to minus five is generally considered um, safe from throw punishment, where only technically a grappler could throw punish you. Well, anyways, this mind game goes completely to the to the defender. Any attack you do will defeat them. If they do a crush, they are at disadvantage. It might not even be in the correct crushing frame sort of move. Like an example being like Ayane's 4P, which is a good high crush. If you like do it in close range, and an opponent can still hit can still hit you easily with the uh, highs or mids. Like if you do it at a correct range, like if you end up hitting someone at the correct range, and you can end up like beating mids. But if you do it in close range, like after you're in a after you do something that like leaves you negatives, then it may not it it will, may still get counter hit because you because of the disadvantage you have the. Because of the disadvantage that you're at, the crushing frames may not um, kick in properly. Uh, and just let's see, just continuing on here. All right. So the only thing that that the person that is at the small advantage. So obviously, if you're at minus four to minus five, they're at plus four to plus five. The only thing they can rely on at this point is what's called defensive hold Yomi, which can be reacted to by sound if you wait for the bait, but this might require temporarily dis disabling your uh, small advantage. Just to let you know, um, Yomi means uh, Yomi is just simply the Japanese term for mind games. So you may you end up may see me or other people who are explaining fighting games related things. We're going to be using Yomi and mind game interchangeably. All right, so now all since all of the opponent's defenses are, are options are very limited, the 
the mind game is uh, y yours to control. So obviously once you get to about uh, plus four or once you get to about plus four, plus five on block, then the then the opponent the opponent has the uh, advantage. As what's an example of a minus five? All right. Well, an example of one for for Christy would be her any of her moves that ended the uh, what's just the rapid fire or machine gun fists would be would be minus five. All right, I can't, I can't set the opponent, or I can't set the Ioni to block here to show you, but but once you get familiar with the animations, you, you'll get the idea. So if Christy is at, uh, if, an, if your opponent does block this, they can't, they can't punish her for, they can't punish her for this move if she doesn't unblock, however, Christy can't actually do any sort of attacks unless I end up reading you doing a slow move or if I read you like going for a throw then that's the only time I'll attack you. Like I do commonly try and use these moves to try and bait people to try and um to try and bait people to try and throw you but for the most part if the opponent goes for any attack it will beat you out. So that's usually why sometimes after doing this move back it takes some sort of uh, evasive action. With Christy it's commonly her command sidestep because most um, quick pokes most quick pokes generally are linear such as trying to jab or um, 6p back for instance all right so um so the best thing to think about is using uh, minus four to minus five moves is that you're safe on block however you you pretty much have to stop your offense so I mean whereas with zero to minus three it's kind of like it feels like it's a mind game on both ends but with minus four to minus five it's kind of like you're safe on block but your offense has to kind of stop there all right just uh, moving along to the next section now known as medium advantage this is minus six to minus seven on guard also usually referred to sometimes as a semi safe or semi safe on block all right this situation is when you have the ability to throw punish from from a medium, from what's called medium advantage, but you go for, but instead you choose to just opt for a promise in mind game. Why do you do this? Of course, for damage potential, for baits, and of course, just all in the name of mind games, in the name of that Yomi. If you have an attack with a launcher and your opponent attacks, your launcher hits guaranteed. There's even less ability for them to crush you at this point. If they try to hold, they might end up getting stunned anyways or thrown or offensive held. It's in your hands because instead of choosing the safe road, you choose the one with the mind game. Alright, generally recommended if you if you do end up leaving yourself at minus well either minus six or minus seven. Because uh, for the most part either one you you have to end up treating them almost the same way. Alright, for a uh, minus seven is it can be easily thrown by neutral throws, which are five frame throws. However, neutral throws can be broken and they're usually not that dangerous because they don't do much damage. So a, a common thing you can do if you do something that's minus seven or minus six on block is you can buffer a throw break during it. Since the only guaranteed attack the opponent can do on you is, is a throw attempt. Well, so, so, so technically, or I should say, it's the safest option the opponent could do is go for a neutral throw. But of course, if the if the, if the opponent, like for instance, just goes for it, so you could, like for instance, you can just you can break. Uh, neutral throws that the opponent uh, goes for. Uh, but similar to small advantage, this one also technically your uh, for the most part your your offense does kind of end in here. The focus is around seeing kind of how the opponent reacts when you do a minus seven move to them. I mean, uh, 
The most common thing is that opponents may try, they either try and roll you or they'll try and um, strike back. Alright, what was said earlier from the Book of Destruction is that instead of going for the neutral throw, is to try and is make, use it for a mind game instead. Because the thing goes, after a minus 7 move, the opponent might assume that you're trying to... You're gonna try neutral throw them. So obviously if the opponent tries to break a neutral throw, then that means they're like buffering a throw. And of course with the DOA 5, uh, including last round triangle system, if someone goes for a throw attempt and the opponent... and the other person ends up striking that... You'll end up getting high counter blown, meaning that the opponent will get 150% damage if you go for if you go for a throw, just because you're trying to you're trying to buffer a throw break. But the the main thing also around the kind of basis for being at a, up to a plus seven uh, mind game is that is that basically the opponent kind of knows so that really they can't really do any strikes unless they're trying to stuff a uh, throw attempt pretty much. Or trying to stuff like a really, a really slow move, like a like the opponent's trying to do a slow guard break or an unblockable. But for the most part, after minus seven, the main reason why you'd attack after minus seven move is to stop someone from trying to throw you. Because a, a lot of uh, people's instinct after blocking a minus seven move may be trying to see if they can get in like a sneak in a quick throw. But it, well, if the opponent does show that after like they they block a move, that would be like. That would end up being like minus seven on block. If you notice that they do tend to strike back, then obviously after this you'll have to either guard or you can try a you can try a fuzzy guard. I mean this will so I mean just reminder fuzzy guard is is easier three three H or you can do a fast one with two two but but um yeah I mean if the opponent does try to strike back when you after minus seven then you'll have to either just guard or fuzzy guard or you can even um you can even make use of uh, side steps. But yeah I mean that's kind of the basis for minus seven. Um I mean just to let you know yeah from zero to minus from zero to minus seven that's generally considered um safe because obviously the the only get potential guaranteed damage you can get from in between those frames would be the opponent getting a neutral throw attempt. So I mean, uh, although I will obviously just make sh just uh, make sure you know that it, when you face a grappler class character, they do have four frame neutral throws and uh, six frame uh, punish throws. What that means is that uh, a grappler can um, get a neutral throw attempt on up to minus five and they can get a, a guaranteed throw punish on minus seven. So yeah, that is one thing to watch out for if you're facing Bass, Lisa, Tina, or even uh, Hayabusa, is that if you end up doing something that's uh, would be like, if you end up doing something that is like minus seven on block, ah, crap. If you, uh, wait. If you end up doing something that is uh, minus, minus seven on block, then those grappler characters can throw punish you for it. All right, so now we're moving on to. Uh, all right, with this from this kind of a <laughs> section onwards is usually considered a throw punishment. All right, so after um. After minus or medium advantage, now we're going to be going on to uh, medi called medium uh, punishment uh, advantage, minus eight to uh, minus twelve on guard. I mean, so basically, for the most part, if the if the opponent blocks something that is anywhere between minus eight or usually worse, then you're open to what's called guaranteed throw punishment. That means that any opponent's seven frame throw can uh, punish you. This is of course assuming that the move the move reaches, but um like an example like an example of like a minus eight move. So, I mean like Ayane's uh, back turn uh, four P plus KP or uh, one P plus KP. These are minus eight and are 
guaranteed throw punishable and blocked by uh, by uh, I7 throw. There are some uh, exceptions, of course, such as uh, there are people have moves like, for instance, Ionade's back turn 4H plus K is minus 8 unblock, but you actually can't throw punish. You can't throw punish it because it pushes back really far on block. But for those kind of things about seeing about technicalities with throw punishments, you have to actually pretty much look at each move and see if they're if the opponent is able to throw it. Main reasons why a minus eight move would not be throw punishable would be because either of a pushback due to distance or if there's like an air state or crouching state. Although if, if a move does end up having like a if a move does end up having like a crouching state, then in that case you would have to use a you would have to use a low throw. But yeah, it it's, it is generally recommended to not use um, minus eight or worse moves on block regularly, especially if the minus eight move doesn't have a follow up. Like something like Ionis, like three uh, P is minus fourteen on block. I mean, yeah, that's 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 pretty negative in itself, but it does have delayable follow ups. So just like I said in the last session. Technically, if you're throwing a free cancel, you're not you're not really doing guaranteed punishment. You're doing what's called a punishment on read. So if you so what you have to do is you have to call the opponent out in the free cancel. Then you do the appropriate punish. Like with minus 14, you can punish with a even well. You could technically punish with slow throws up to I 12. I mean, of course, you have to keep in mind it's risky to do so, but it's technically physically possible. All right, so um. And now I'll just go on to, well, after medium punishment advantage is large punishment advantage. This is minus 13 or greater on guard. I mean, including the aforementioned minus 14. All right, in this, ca in this case, the move isn't blocked, but you get even more free damage. And, I, and as I said before, with minus 13 or worse, you can throw punish with 12 frame throws. So if you were to block something that, if you were to block something that's minus 13, minus 14, you can use a big throw to punish it. Although of course, to, to usually punish with I-12 throws, you have to be considerably on point though, because they don't necessarily have the most um, simplistic uh, inputs. I mean, when you when you throw punish someone, the general instinct is just do a 6T, because generally in in most cases, 6T is a seven frame throw that is as good range and. Um, it has good range and is something that, and is something that is usually like quick and is usually uh, almost reactionary. Whereas with the 12 frame throws, like, alright, what's the input? I mean, a lot of characters have 12 frame throws that have like a half circle forward, half circle backward input. Like, like uh, one of Christie's throws, for instance, is uh, one of Christie's throws, for instance, is like that, or a half circle back, or her 12 frame throw. Uh, so 10 frame. So obviously it's, it can be a bit hard to do a half circle or like a half circle input on reaction. So that is something you have to keep in mind because you would have to end up having to buffer the throw slightly and you can end up missing the timing. So obviously a 6T is usually a good way to go. I mean Ioni 6T reaches, for instance, reaches uh, 1.6 meters, which is a uh, which is actually pretty good distance. I mean you know, only her quarter circle forward T reaches further, but it's a 10 frame throw. But but still, I mean it's it's. That's still a solid distance as opposed to like her, like her 4T reaches 1.5. Her, uh, her neutral throw also reaches 1.5, and her her 66 her 66 T reaches 1.45. Well, the reason why most 66 Ts tend to reach uh, on paper a shorter distance is because the little dash in from the 66 ends up actually increasing its range slightly. So if you want to like throw punish something from a bit further away, you might use a 6-6-T. Alright, so now I'm going to be looking at things from the other end now. From there, I was kind of like a... I was kind of looking at things more so from the... The attacker side, basically the person that... I was looking at the, the kind of um, advantage that like what the... Defender would be thinking about, but now um, 
I mean the person that ended up blocking the move so that ended up getting the well would be at positive frames but now I'm gonna be looking at things from the other side now so I mean so now what I am is that that this is basically just to like keep no I'm gonna be looking at things from now um, the person that is now going to be on the defensive so basically the attacker that put themselves at disadvantage all right if you are personally at the disadvantage you need to be ready defensively your options are limited but not non-existent you are at the mercy of the opponent depending on the disadvantage you need to use your reading ability and scope out exactly what the opponent thinks you personally will do all right so I'll I'll, I'll just end up uh, going over now and now going back to now this is a minuscule disadvantage all right here you have you have several options at minuscule disadvantage if you jab it will beat your opponent's mid but your jab will not beat your opponent's jab or a high crush rate at matter. As I said earlier, this is the closest thing to an equal mind game because the offender actually has an attack that can win. The offender also has high low crush options from this very small disadvantage. Like always, holds are always available to those that can fully read the opponent or are simply taking a shot in the dark due to the opponent's previous habits. Fuzzy guard can be used at this point if timed quickly, but any change in timing you might get screwed over. I mean, yes, if, if you are wondering how to like beat out a, a fuzzy guard, what you generally do is, is you make use of a slower throw. If your character has an offensive hold like most grapplers have, those are great against people that try to fuzzy guard. Because if they, if they end up fuzzy guard, they might do it too early, then the slow throw will catch them on the recovery. The same applies to people who um, stagger escape during stun. Slow, I mean, slow throws are great also for, for catching people that for catching people that like to uh, slow escape because if 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 because what usually happens is once your their slow escape frames wear off they'll be um, vulnerable they'll be open to being uh, rowing but uh all right but just uh with the uh, reference to this as i said earlier with uh kind of on the uh, from the person that was at the advantage the minuscule advantage as you can see between minuscule disadvantage or advantage it's it's just a very slight advantage to the person that obviously blocked the attack but but the thing is that it they still have to take into mind that even the person that put themselves in minuscule disadvantage they could still attack back and they can still um and they, they could still win in this exchange because the main things to keep in mind is that jabs beat out mid punches like six b's or six k's and um Whereas six P's or six K's will beat out two P's, like our lows, and lows will beat out jabs. I mean, it's like a triangle system in its. It's it's basically like a. It's like a triangle system in itself. Jab beats out mid attack. Mid attack beats out low attack, and low attack beats out high. So I mean, it's a that's it's it's a kind of a it's kind of a priority system in itself. I'll, I'll just I'll just like say it again. So high beats out mid, mid beats out low, and low beats out high. All right, now just uh, going on to small disadvantage. All right, now we're up to minus four, minus five on guard. At a small disadvantage, you cannot use any regular attacks to win anymore. You are limited to holds evasions and crushes. The only crushes that really work anymore are crouch status high crushes. They show themselves by the fact that you can offensive you can low offensive hold them. Like a good example of a high crush of course are two P's. Two P's basically never get hit by highs ever. However certain uh, crush moves like I said earlier like Ionic 4P can still technically be hit by highs at certain uh, frames during the attack. Like it doesn't crush throughout the entire one like a like a 2p or a 1p or some sort of um, crouching status low. Like those ones, these are, those are the kind of um, high crushes you would go for in a situation like that. Alright, regular high crushes will usually not work at this point. Some evasion charge moves on the or other methods of evasion will work against low range moves, but that's taking a risk. Basically like using a... Uh, that'd be an example if, if your character has a, a move that kind of like um, that like steps back or something like that. I mean, an example would be like Kasumi's uh, 
power blow takes like a Kasumi's power blow takes a step back, but um, but again, like you said, it's it, it's it's a risk in itself, and it's generally not a favorable risk. As always, the option of the defensive hold is there. You can read the opponent, or you can take a shot in the dark with a former influences from the habits in that situation. All right, so um. If you're at uh, minus four to minus five, if you're at uh, minus four to minus five, you you basically can't you can't do really strike back. You, you um, if it, it, you do have to also take into account speed of characters. For instance, if you're someone like um, if you're someone like Christy and you're fighting a slow and slow like Bass. And you're at minus five. You can try to intercept them with jabs because of the big speed difference. But this is assuming that this is assuming that both characters are relatively uh, similar um, speed-wise. But generally speaking, if both characters are, are similar speed-wise, like Christie's fighting, uh, like Kasumi, for instance, then if she's at minus five, she won't be able to jab or six speed back. But pretty much focus almost entirely on uh, defensive actions. Like it's like a generally recommended, the only sort of um, attacks you should be doing are ones with good evasive properties. Obviously, like a special side, if you have a special side step or um, like high crushes. But even then, I mean, a high crush if they go for a mid, then you're gonna get counter hit blown because mids get uh, can always get counter hit status on um, crouching opponents. But um, these are just uh, different things that you have to kind of uh, take into account when you're at um, different advantages on block. Like, I mean, the way how things kind of like operate online may be differently because a lot of people think that when you're at disadvantage, you're, the way how you get out disadvantage is by mashing buttons even more, like like just um, pressing as many like buttons as you can. But of course, if you're trying that in a more, in a, like a tournament setting, then that will just get you blown up really fucking hard. I mean, you don't, you, mean, you don't, you don't want to like end up like doing that I and mean, you don't want to end up just, um, mashing buttons too much, so that's why I find it is quite important to pay attention to different frames. I mean, as you get, and as anyone has seen the previous sessions would know, I really love this uh, move details box here. I mean, I mean, this thing is just friggin', it's friggin' incredible. I mean, it gives you every little detail that you need to know about, like, any frames here. I mean, here, it tells me that Christie's jabs minus one on normal hit, so... So yes, so technically speaking, if I just do a jab, it's like she's at disadvantage. But um, yeah, but in, in deal way though, minus one barely means anything. So, <laughs> so, so I mean, you don't have to worry about that. But it, it is really good that you um, it gives you all these details. So I'll just give you. A, I'll see if I can just uh, sum things up from this session a bit. All right. The gist of being disadvantaged on block is that from about minus eight or worse, you are open to guaranteed throw punishment from your opponent. If you're feeling frisky, you can mash P or 2P to high counter below someone who is slow on their I7 throw punishment. That that is of course risky if the opponent chooses to just simply pressure back with a quick strike of their own, like a 6P or even a launcher, for instance. From about minus one to minus three, you can attempt to strike back with a with a jab like a P or 2P to counter hurt any relatively slower mid attacks that may be used as retaliation. But at about minus four to minus five, you're essentially going to have to take defensive action, such as blocking, fuzzy guarding, sidestepping, or of course uh, defensive holding. At minus six to minus seven, you're going to be looking out for five frame neutral throws to break, and this is done of course just by pressing the just by just by pressing the throw button. So of course, uh, breaking throws is just nothing more than just pressing the throw button. You can buffer it during doing something that is, if you're done something that was like minus, if you end up throwing out a move that ends up being like minus seven on block, you can buffer a throw break in there. Alright, so, um, but yeah, at minus six or minus seven, you will be looking out for I5 neutral throws along with focusing on the same defensive tactics used when at minus four or minus five, such as basically the aforementioned blocking, fuzzy garden, sidestepping, or defensive holding. Once you get a read on your opponent's tendencies, you could st then you could start to uh, 
you can then you can should you can start to more uh, comfortably implement de defensive holds into your strategy. Um, all right, so that's that's kind of uh, just of it, and um, uh, I did make a mention of this uh, earlier. Uh, what I was talking about is is that if, you, if the opponent ends up throwing out something and you know it's around like minus 5 on block, let's say like minus 5 to minus 7, to some, or even if it's like minus 8 on block, like it's it's a bit of a, ri a risky action, but what you can do is you could throw a launcher against someone that does that. I mean, it's done in other 3D fighters also, but what it is is that you block something, you block something that's like around like, let's say like minus 5 to minus 7, then, if you think the opponent's going to continue attacking, you blow their ass up with the launcher. So instead of like going for a neutral throw or trying to like strike back with like a 6B, you can just throw out a launcher. But of course, if the opponent correctly reads that and after they do something that's minus 5 and they opt to just simply block, then they'll obviously will put, um, block and punish your launcher back. So as you see, that's kind of like how the mind game can work is that it... And then you can, you can end up... Um, evaluating different risks but of course if you want to take the safe way out the best option of course is the um, for minus about minus six or worse is go just go for a grab I mean minus six or seven neutral grab for minus eight or worse usually a 60 and, and then when you start I mean so um, when it when in doubt you usually should just go for a, a forward throw if you know something's minus eight is worse because going for slow throws can be can be risky if you either mess up the if you mess up the input or you do the input too slowly, especially on most uh, 10 or 12 frame throws, which have more challenging uh, inputs. Uh, but um, anyways, that's uh, that's it for today. All right, um, I definitely highly, highly, highly recommend people taking a look at the book of destruction. I mean, yes, it was originally on the Dead or Alive Central site, but I will include a, I will include a link for it below on my, below on the YouTube video. So, um, yeah, so I mean, check it out. It's some insightful stuff. I mean, I wish that um, X Des was still playing today because he he was a, a he, he was like I said a pretty legendary player and a, a really really amazing um, Ioni player, but. Uh, Anyways, that's it for uh, this week. Don't forget to uh, rate, comment, uh, subscribe. Let me know what you th let me know what you uh, think of all this. Uh, let me know how you're doing, or just like, just say hi, like say what's up, and just uh, and just uh, like just just uh, give whatever feedback you feel. All right, so um, so uh, so um, guess that's that's just it for now, and. Um, be sure to, be, and I'll see you next week. And be sure to check out uh, all my other, all my other like, kind of past videos with relation to the top tier tips guide. If he hasn't, all right. So, um, so I guess that's it for now. And I'll see you next week on top tier tips.